so it is mindfulness 24 by 7. That simply means we have transcended the time. The moment we say mindfulness 24 by 7, we have already transcended the time. Only question is, am I aware of that? If I am aware, I'm already there. <coughs> so no issue. <coughs> we are learning this mindfulness 24 by 7 by a great master who lived almost 8th or 9th century, no, 11th century. He has written many texts and one of them is Panchdashi. So every, any activity that we do, uh, it means the time, effort. Take an example of a, I remind an example by one great master. He gives an example of a rifle and the bullet. So he says that barrel of the rifle should be clean <clears throat> so that the bullet can pass smoothly to hit the target. rifle of the barrel if it is not clean bullet cannot be fired correctly <clears throat> if the target is not chosen the bullet cannot hit so that is an example but how it is related to mindfulness <clears throat> two things are there cleanliness of the barrel and awareness of the target. My awareness of the target is target. Awareness of the target is what is the awareness? What I'm searching for. I'm searching for the real self. So the bullet should hit. It is the mind that should hit the real self, the bullet destroyed, and we are in the real self. But if the barrel is not clean, nothing is going to happen. So that is why we talk of the impurities of the mind. We have to make sustained and continuous effort to purify the mind. <clears throat> Keep the barrel clean. When the barrel is clean, we are aware that what we are searching for. Otherwise, what will happen? You listen to me and your ego accepts it. <clears throat> gone. The entire session is gone. You miss the entire session. That is why I say we have to listen to it again and again. So if the barrel is not clean, we are not a seeker. Now see, if the barrel is clean, you are aware of the target, what happens? Magic happens. Where? Here and now. <clears throat> so I'm expanding that example into self-awareness. What it means, I see you by my eyes. I hear you by my ears. When we hug each other, we feel the sensation of the touch. Eyes do not know the ears. Are you clear? Ears do not know the skin. The skin does not know the smell. Oh, that looks very strange. 
Behind the senses, there is a mind, and behind the mind, there is a consciousness. It is one consciousness becoming the eyes, it is the same consciousness becoming the ears, it is the same consciousness <clears throat> becoming the touch, becoming my thought. I said positive thing. It is the same consciousness becoming my anger, my hesitation, my stress, my duality, my conflict. No, no, don't say that. You know, we are searching real self. You told us it is full of peace and nothingness. How do you say that? Separate it. Barrel is not clean. That is why the consciousness appears to manifest as anger, as stress, as hesitation. Did you get an answer? When the barrel is not clean, that consciousness passing through the mind, and the mind is impure. So it takes the impurity in our thought, speech, and action, and expressed as anger, hesitation, duality, and but the fact still is there, it is still the same consciousness. Now we have to make a choice. Now we have to make a choice. Which way you want to go? So what is that choice? That choice is discernment. And you are in a state of dispassion because of that discernment towards impurity, towards the ignorance. So what happens? You are in mindfulness 24 by 7. Done. So normally, our masters, first they give an example and then they correlate that example to the journey of the mindfulness. They expand it. Well, how, why they expand it? Why they correlate? In order to make ourselves aware of the fact that our nature is peace and happiness, our nature cannot be anger, agitation, duality, conflict. You are the highest level of a seeker. You instantly become aware of this fact. The very awareness dilutes, dissolves, and destroys the impurity in the mind. If I'm not aware, that is lack of awareness. So what is that lack of awareness? It is known in Eastern wisdom as avidya. Avidya means ignorance, misunderstanding, wrong notion, from where it comes, from the mind, barrel, impurity. Did you get it? Say yes. So now, if you recall the last session, we understood a couple of factors, learning and listening. Why learning and listening? It is, it is a self-inquiry. Let me add one more point. <clears throat> that I gave an example of the barrel with the impurity. So if you, if you do not clean the barrel, the bullet cannot pass through to hit the target. But if I'm not aware of the target, then even if the mind is pure, there is no impurity, I'm not aware of the target, the bullet cannot hit it. So to hit the bullet, self-inquiry is required, listening and learning from a teacher. But as far as the impurity is to be removed is concerned, we have to make our continuous effort in the life 
And what is that continuous effort? I want to get out of this stress and anxiety and emotional freedom, emotional bondage. I've already related that example to our daily living. And now we recall the last session, we discussed about a couple of factors of listening and learning. Pure consciousness or the real self reveals the reflected consciousness. What is that reflected consciousness? In common man's language, it is the mind. And the moment you have a mind, we have a world around us. The moment we have a mind and the world around us, the mind has certain preferences of likes and dislikes and duality and a conflict and hesitation. So everything seems to appear through the mind in the world. You are different from me. I am different from you. You are man and I am women, gender, attitude, behavior, duality and a conflict all belongs to the mind and the reflected consciousness, not to the pure consciousness. They are always separate. How, how they are separate? As the wave is separate from the water. So the water is always present in the wave? Yes. That is why I told you, even the, in anger, in hesitation, in duality, in a conflict, that consciousness is still present. And it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the mind, the impurity of the mind. In the second understanding that we, we took, the world belongs to the mind, nothing belongs to the pure consciousness. It is independent. It is always free. So if we talk about the 24 by 7, the state of mindfulness or awakened state, it is because of that. <clears throat> the world of pleasure or pain, sorrow and happiness, likes and dislikes belongs to the belongs to the mind. What is mind? It is a reflected consciousness. And another understanding that we discussed, what is real is pure consciousness and what is false is the mind in the world. That is what we have understood by the canvas, another metaphor, the canvas, causal, Body, subtle body is the mind and the world. We did not discuss about this causal body. We need to understand it clearly. Why? To remove the impurity completely in order to be settled in the mindfulness 24 by 7. <clears throat> So this mind seems to experience the two consciousnesses. Mind seems to, one is the reflected consciousness, one consciousness is the mind. It says I am in stress. You, you are responsible for my stress. This is one consciousness. But the one who knows, who is aware of this fact and experiences the knowledge is different consciousness. But we cannot have a luxury of two consciousness. Consciousness is always one. So the moment I become aware of this, but how to resolve this? How to understand it clearly? How to have that understanding by the self-inquiry? Listening and learning and getting the right knowledge to be settled in the state of mindfulness. I believe you are getting it, but let me repeat in a different way. <clears throat> As I told you, the, the, the eye sees you, ears listen you, or your ears listen to me. 
but the eyes do not know the ears. The ears do not know the skin of skin. I, the skin does not know the smell. When we go behind, we see it is the mind. And when we go behind the mind, we see it is the one consciousness becoming the eyes, becoming the ears, becoming the smell, becoming the nose. One consciousness. One consciousness goes through the nose, the smell. One consciousness goes through the skin and the ears. One consciousness with the different instruments having different functions. Perceives this world. And it is possible because of the mind. So if the mind remains impure, barrel is not clean, it creates two consciousnesses. Multiple, not two, but multiple. One consciousness pertaining to the eyes, per se, the other is to the listening, the ear, the third is of the skin, fourth is of the smell. <clears throat> that is how we are able to perceive the world. It is a necessary evil. It has to be there. Only one thing needs to be understood, that this is not me. This is not. <clears throat> so even Buddha says this world is suffering. I have to realize it. I have to experience it. So knowledge and experience should merge together. And the moment the knowledge and experience merge together, we are already in the state of mindfulness. So there comes an issue. This master says that my mind, when it goes through the sense organs, it limits itself. You see the chain of the thoughts and how it concludes the master. First I said that consciousness is one, passes through all the five sense organs. Now every sense organ limits me. What is that me? That is the false self, that is the mind. Limits me. So that limitation causes the insecurity, causes the unhappiness. I'm limited. I feel always limited. I want to be free. So to understand that limitation, why to understand that limitation? So that we understand and realize that as such there is no limitation and that limitation is caused by the ignorance in the mind, caused by the impurity of the mind. It is because of the limitation we have an emotional dependence. It is because of that limitation we feel insecure. It is because of the limitation we find unhappiness in our life. So there is a physical limitation, there is an emotional limitation, there is, a man, there is an intellectual limitation. Always I find that I'm limited. And that is where this master gives us another metaphor. As long as the clay pot feels I have only this much of the space. Fact is that space cannot be divided. But as long as the clay pot feels I have only this much of space, I find limited myself. That is how I feel myself, I am the body, I am limited. I'm just simultaneously comparing the two. So one is false and other is true. So 
So there are three verses that gives us a clue of another metaphor. But also understand before we go to that metaphor, limitation by the physical body. So we are in a mysterious world. We start asking the question, what is birth and the death? So when we look at the life and the breath, again, there is a mystery that hunger and thirst, we are limited by the hunger and thirst. Then it comes to the mind. We experience the dual nature of pain and pleasure, sorrow and happiness. At the intellectual level, we have likes and dislikes. And all together, physical, life, mind, intellect, all together, they create a fake personality that is known as ego. And that ego is the false I. It hides the real I. I told you the consciousness is hidden behind the ears and the eyes. The fact is, it is the same consciousness. And still I have two totally opposing, different perception in our life. If that is possible at the personal level, that is why I see you, you are different from me. Fact is that we are not. Truth is that we are not. So we carry forward these duality and a conflict. Yes, and I will not give the example. I'll go directly to this next stage of the teaching by this master. It says, let us uh, understand, uh, let us have an expansion of consciousness. When I'm limited by this body, so I will give you why you are limited, the master is saying. And once we understand this metaphor now, so I'll just give an introduction and we will continue our journey in the next session. The first, you are aware, the first metaphor, the canvas, then it is touched, causal body, then there is a sketch in the mind, and ultimately the painting is nothing but the world outside. So the four stages, pure consciousness, causal body, something triggers that goes into the mind, mind creates an impression, and then the mind-body complex, and then we see the world outside. But the truth is only the canvas, the pure consciousness. Now we are going to understand the four stages of consciousness. Those are the four stages of manifestation. So here, how one consciousness appears as four. Why four? Why one? Uh, I am also conscious. You are also conscious. So you see how that consciousness appears to be divided when we are 100% sure that consciousness cannot be divided. Space cannot be divided. So once we have a clarity, this mind will never fall victim of the limitations. So he gives us a four, he says just for granted, for the sake of understanding, understand there are four, state, four consciousnesses or four stages of the consciousness. One is the pure, then the second, then the third, and the fourth. So just consider the space is one, or the consciousness is one. When there is a mind reflects that consciousness, I claim that I am an individual. 
I will continue. Unless you get the feel of it, I will explain through the different ways. The first, consciousness is a reflective consciousness. So the two part, one is the pure consciousness, second is the reflected consciousness. <clears throat> at the individual level, or you can say at the micro level. What about at the macro level? So that consciousness at the macro level is known as God. Can I say in a different mathematical equation, pure consciousness plus pure consciousness plus reflected consciousness is known as the individual, you, I, me, all the living species. Now, this is at the micro level and make it at the macro level. So at the macro level, at the universal level, that is why we say God is everywhere. So the pure consciousness plus a cosmic mind is what it means by the God. Do we remember the reflected consciousness? Are you aware of that? It is the subtle body <clears throat> that perceives the world. Our master says, and but we have to just become aware, the world lives in my mind. <clears throat> in sleep, the mind is also sleeping, so there is no world. So it means the world lives in my mind, not in pure consciousness. that gives us an understanding that we are a pure consciousness but we are talking the fourth four consciousness you can say four four consciousness four types of consciousness <coughs> so i will leave on that again understand that what is that four uh, consciousness we did talk about the two first is what we say the real self Real self is pure consciousness. <clears throat> now that plus the mind, <clears throat> individual consciousness at the, at the micro level. Real self or pure consciousness plus maya or the delusion or the false notion about the world all, all around. It is known as macro level of the consciousness so we already have pure consciousness we already have individual consciousness we already have the universal consciousness when we look around the world outside it is intelligently organized so we cannot say that it is by chance I initially went through the four stages of the consciousness, but now I'm comparing with the metaphor, so you have to think about it. For about a week of contemplation is required. <coughs> Part space is the first, the individual consciousness. The infinite space at the macro level. Now we are going little deeper. You have a clay pot, <clears throat> the space inside it. Because there is a space inside, when you put the water or tea or coffee, it is a tea space. Do you see? Space is there, pot space is already there. But now you have created a, oh, take an example of a water space. 
Now the water becomes a reflected medium in a pot. You see the four stages of consciousness. First is the individual consciousness, pot space, and the infinite space is already around it. Now you put the water. So that water reflects, if you put it in before the sky, the clouds are also reflected. So there is a cloud space, there is a water space, there is a part space, and there is an infinite space. It is because of that wrong notions, they all are different, we believe there are many consciousness. Even we say, intellectually we believe, intellectually we believe, but my mind goes through the ignorance and the impurity, it says, no, you are different from me. So I'm leaving where I'm leaving. Just remember the pot space and the infinite space all around. Then you put the water. How you can put the water? Because there is a space inside. When you put the water, it becomes the water space. And in that water space, again, there is a reflection of the cloud. So he has given example, the pot space, <coughs> great space, water space, and the cloud space. In the water, there is a reflection. The water is such a medium. So if I understand how these four stages of reflection works and creates an delusion in my mind, if I remove that delusion by a self-inquiry, we can live in mindfulness 24 by 7, eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Do you see that? You close your eyes only if there is a space. You cannot move anything without the space. I'm taking you in the in the this journey. Just what we have been doing. That is the way the journey works. What we have been doing. The eyes are closed. The body is comfortable, and so you do not struggle. Yes, that is okay. But because you are a seeker, the barrel is already clean. So why should I talk about that? Oh, so that is taken for granted, yes. We will move slowly, we will transition slowly from one metaphor to the second, so we are not in a hurry. <clears throat> yes, you can see that body lives there in the state of the comfort, and you are taken for it is taken for granted for a seeker. The body is sensation, comfort, and steadiness is there, and the space is there, and the space is awareness, and awareness is this. Oh, what did you say? I just closed my eyes because of the space, that is one space. And then I see the emptiness in the space inside. Then I'm aware of the space all around. I'm aware of the space in the room and the space outside and the space in the galaxy in the solar system. So are you talking of the space inside, what it means? The space between the organs, obviously, that's why the organs are different, can be perceived differently. Now I'm talking of one great space. 
Oh, then there is a space in between the organs also. You see, I'm just making your mind familiar with these small and easy concepts. Being comfortable. What do I say being comfortable? I have been saying, look at the neck joint awareness. Then your experience, sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Then there is a space. What about the movement of the mind from the neck joint to an experience, one experience to the second? Without the space, you cannot move. Are you getting it? I believe so. Again, take an example, the space all around your body. The moment I see the space all around my body, I limit it, that space, which is all around my body. What about the great space? It's already present. So I divided it. Who divided? The mind. So that space looks at the other person. That person in the space looks at the other person. We have a false notion that I'm an individual consciousness. But anyhow, space all around the body, space all around the shoulder joints. Then you have an experience of Sensation, comfort, and steadiness, awareness of the space is already there. And then there is another space. You just look at it, how the mind limits one single space in many ways. Oh, no worry, you are welcome. I have a very large room. No, it is all about the space. So when the mind says, welcome home, <clears throat> I will offer and greet and serve you the best possible way. The fact is that we recognize the big space in the heart. That's why we say we have a big, oh, he has a big heart. You're listening. That listening causes the learning in the mind. And that learning produces a knowledge. And that knowledge drops the ignorance. False notion. That is what exactly in one way we are doing it. As far as doing it, we are not doing it. The entire body from entire body. Do you want to know about the pot space and the water space? I'm just giving you a few bites. We will expand it. I what I said, the weirdness of the body. and you become aware of so-called your body. But I, I did not say your body. So in that space, we limit ourselves is my body. Part space. Individual consciousness with reference to the body. Come on, awareness of the body means all bodies are made up of the same stuff. Well, if it is made up of the same stuff, then there is no individual consciousness because individual consciousness comes from the support of the physical body.
So with that understanding and awareness, we experience sensation, comfort and steadiness. So again, that sensation, comfort and steadiness is not individual. We take it individual. Can I say here, what is space? Contemplate and reflect. And the space within, is it cloud space? Cloud, what cloud space, water space, pot space, infinite space. We'll work on it. I'm just giving you a bite. Oh, let me look at the, I'm aware of unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. So one idea that we have been working on, lane one, lane two, lane three. Lane one, unwanted, unwelcome thoughts are there. And we are already aware of the lane two the intellect, the knowledge, and awareness, and the witness. So lane one is also one space, lane two is also one space. And the lane three is calmness and peace, that is also one space. Are we have we a three space? Or one space, three objects? one consciousness and different manifestations. So we claim we all are present, means many are present. I'm just giving you a bite so that we can go deeper with reference to this metaphor. We have to clearly understand this four stages of the consciousness as the master says in the beginning. And when we realize in experience, there is only one. We are in mindfulness 24 by 7. Let us go back with reflection on the lane one. Thoughts are coming. Unwelcome thoughts are there. If there is no thought, wonderful. So still we recognize there is no thought. Now others who are in a session might be having other thoughts and I have a different thought. You see, that mind creates a ignorance. Oh, so your mind is different than mine. because of the content. Your house is different than the mine. Your house is bigger, I have a smaller house. Come on, the content is the space. The main thing is only the space. Space is the same. It cannot be different. And it is not. That's why he said, one consciousness manifests through the eyes, ears, and eyes appear totally different than the ear. I look totally different than you, and you look totally different than me. That is why the Master wants us to know the different stages of the consciousness where the ignorance is located, we remove it and we find there is only one reality. Thoughts are there. I explained it in the beginning that that's a lane one. <clears throat> Obviously one space. 
Then I said, jump onto the lane too. I said, do not participate. That is another space. In the resort lane three, I feel the calmness and peace. So we are questioning why you are seeing three places. No, but at the same time, you say it is the same mind. The mental highway has three lanes. But three lanes has one space. Three people are talking, one consciousness. So it's a very subtler level of ignorance that limits, that defines there are different people. We have an individual consciousness that causes the problem. So we have to get rid of those subtle <coughs> levels, layers in the mind that causes the ignorance. Let's look at the breath also, just be aware of the breath. <clears throat> the Lord Shiva, who is also known as the originator of yoga at a very higher level, he says, are you aware of the breath? Yes. Breath is going in and out? Yes. What do you mean by going in and out? Going in you or coming out of you? Or it is going in the body or coming out of the body? You have an answer. But the movement demands a space. So the first, the mind says, I'm an individual consciousness. Then it says, the breath is going in, in the inner space, the breath is coming out from the outer space. So I have already divided the great space into an inner space, outer space, one space. Because of the limitations, we recognize we are two. You are listening to me and I'm speaking to you. Why? We divide that consciousness into many stages. Four, four consciousness. Or you can say four types. You're looking at the breath, 
And now you are aware of the space inside when the breath goes in. You are aware of the space when the breath comes out. And how do I say that? Because I claim that I am the body. How simple it is to understand it. And we drop the mind. Mind, don't create confusion. It is one space, inside, outside, and <clears throat> that is how you say it. it is your house, my house. We both have the houses in the same community, township, and the county. County means space. Township is space. House is a space. Bedroom is a space. <clears throat> Now, I am returning, Lord Shiva says there is a space or a pause between the breath, before the breath goes in, or I would say after the breath goes in, before it comes out, there is a pause, and that pause is the space. The Master Shiva says, recognize that space. A cognition of that space the volcano erupts in the mind. And the mind is fused. <clears throat> Such a simple thing, we are not doing it, we are recognizing. After the breath goes in and before it comes out, there has to be a pause. <clears throat> And before the breath goes in, there is a pause. That is what how we recognize the inhalation and the exhalation. <clears throat> Let me explain it in again. The breath is going in very good. Then there is a pause, and then the breath comes out. Now breath is coming out, coming out, naturally there is a pause before the breath goes in. <clears throat> so Shiva guides her wife Parvati that can you recognize that pause? One space contains in that pause, one consciousness is the reality. Mind goes somewhere else, bring it. No change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. It means you have started doing something. Who starts doing something without your permission? The mind. Why it does? I gave an example of the barrel, the imperative. <coughs> Why the mind? invites unwanted, unwelcome thoughts, because mind says, I am the reality. Come on. 
Don't search. Stop it. We're going deeper, so I'm just giving you a different expression so that we can pick up easily. Heart space, space in the body, unattached, real self, water space, individual consciousness, outside, infinite space. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand. Your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms know your experiences bring the hands down sam how are you i missed you on thursday missed you too. um yeah, yeah it was, it was uh, um it was, it was a great, great day. day felt, felt very, very absorbed, absorbed and, uh, um, just, Just uh, uh, felt like a wide, wide open space. space. Good. So remain absorbed. No problem. <laughs> problem is gone. How, yeah. are <laughs> How are you, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. good. Um, it, it, was, was, uh, it was it was it was very, very good. good. I, I, um, I again, again this would be another another, another lesson, lesson in, in um, that will have to be contemplated and reflected, reflected throughout, throughout the week. The week. Um, thoughts, thoughts some, of some of the concepts, concepts that, that were going, going through, through my mind, mind um, throughout, throughout was the some of the parts make up the whole, um, and focusing on a single consciousness. Um, so, so a little, little bit more thought needs to go into that. that. And, and then, um, I especially, especially focused in on when you were talking about the, um, the end of the inhalation and exhalation. Um, I, I, I would refer to it as the, the top of the breath and the bottom of the breath. Yeah. And I just seem to have been focused there throughout the meditation after you first almost like all the it was your suggestion. And um, I, was I was really into it. it. I just, just felt, felt this, this, just, just the, the, the breath, breath flow going, going through my entire um, space. space. It, it wasn't, wasn't, I'm not going to say my body, body because I'm not my body, body but, but, but it, it was just, just, I just felt the space, space around me just as, as I'm breathing and then, then it just, just stopping at top and going, going continuing, continuing to the bottom and stopping at the bottom. And I was very focused on both those endpoints. And it was just nice, just very relaxing. So, so, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, you click that concept. Two things. The first thing that we have to contemplate, there is a part space. Outside, there is a space. Then you put the water. The water reflects another space. That is a cloud space. So there is a part space. There is an infinite space outside. And then there is a water space and the cloud space. The four types of the consciousness. But uh, the thing that you discussed that that is more or less the similar in one of the texts uh, passed on to us by the originator of yoga, that is Shiva. Uh, that text is uh, gives us 112 methods of meditation. One of them is to find a pause between the breath, whether you say it bottom or the top or whether you say the breath goes in it cannot reverse itself unless there is a pause and that pause is a space it's a well you know you're driving your car forward you have to reverse there is a pause opposing movement there is always a pause but we should not create a pause. If you forcibly create a pause, that is hot yoga. <laughs> and if you discover the pause, that is meditation. Did you, did you get it? That is the difference. Wonderful, Stephen. Thank you. How are you, David and Jerry? Good morning. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, <clears throat> Absolutely, Absolutely love, love uh, the pause at the top or the bottom or both. Yeah. Um, and, and for, for me, I immediately went to some. some it it, it reminds remind me of. I've had the. the I had, had the, the good fortune, fortune of taking uh, car racing, racing lessons, lessons, and, and they, they describe that as, as the apex, apex of the curve, and they say, say that if you hit the apex, apex right, right, it's just, just your it's, it's peace and quiet in a crazy two hundred mile hour race car. And the, and the same, same with downhill skiing. They have, they have you focus, focus on, on that apex, apex because, because they, they say, say that's, that's, the, that's, that's the smoothest, simplest, simplest place. place. So all these lessons I've had in my life, it's, it's very fascinating, fascinating to me. And I love, love that. that. And by, by the end of the meditation, that, that, that pause or that apex area was getting, getting just expansive. expansive. Yes, that is what a beautiful example. Two more, uh, you can say the metaphor, an example to understand it clearly. What is happening because of that ignorance, I see the limitation. The moment I see you, I find that limitation. The water space, water space and the cloud space. Think of it. I see you as an individual consciousness. One, water say I reflect you. Oh, you are also, you also have a consciousness and that limitation. It's a beautiful way. How are you, Jerry? So very good, thank, thank you. you. Um, for, for me, it was a, a um, seamless continuation of Thursday. Because Thursday, the mind really saw um, 
clearly that if, if, if we're, we're not focused and attached to the consciousness, and, and if, if we're focused and attached to everything that's changing, then we're, we're bound. Um, but, but if we're, we're focused, focused and attached to the consciousness, which we are, we already, already are. are. But, but if, if Notice that, 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 that space, space between, between the breath, breath. I, I love, love that, that analogy, and, and I used to use that, that a lot too, and it, 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 it's that sweet spot, and, and it's kind of like getting, getting rid of the static and the radio station or anything else, else. Um, um, getting, getting rid of the ignorance, it's that sweet spot. That's, yeah, that's a very good phrase, the sweet spot, and that sweet spot, spot is always present. So instead of being aware of that sweet spot, we become aware of the effect of it. I become aware. I have a, you have a big house, I have a small house. So I become aware of the big and the small house. I don't become aware of that space. That space is only one. Huh? That space is only one. How beautiful, that's the thank you. And how are you, Terry? We all are one. It went by really fast. Very good. Um, Don't talk I... to with reference to your body. All bodies are the same. Now talk to me. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, just went, went into, into the, the in I space. Space. Yeah, yeah, went into, into the space, space and, and I just stayed, stayed there, there but, but I just, I just, it just, just went, went by really fast. fast. Really fast. That's yeah, really I, good. I don't think, uh, I, I, don't I don't know, know if I fell asleep or... or or, or what, what happened? happened? Because, because I, I just, just went, went, oh, wow. Now you said it went fast. It means you were aware. And that was a moment transcending the time. It's, it's, I think, think so. so. Yeah. Can you tell me how one hour can go fast and how one hour can go late? <laughs> Sometimes, Sometimes that, that can, can happen. happen. Oh, that happens? Ah. Like an, an hour, hour can go, go like, like one minute, minute. It can be like, like one minute. minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it can, can be, be like, like a whole day. It's a new area of research. <laughs> so it is happening because of the mind. One hour is one hour. <laughs> it is always 60 minutes. It cannot stretch to 120 minutes if you say one hour, go late. <laughs> But, but you, you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't, don't notice, notice it. You are in a different level of awareness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the point. So if we move into a higher level of awareness, these experiences will definitely take place and ultimately settle down into one pure consciousness. That is what we are searching for. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. We have anesthesia. And then we will take up a show here. Yeah. Thank you. It is was very uh, also fast and peaceful. And this week I got to understanding that I cannot believe in my mind because uh, sometimes it likes something, sometimes not. But the good thing is that I am not my mind. And during today's lesson, I one more time realized that pure consciousness is self-giving and we have everything for free and our mind claims it's like, like a false king of the world and it claims that it possesses and creates because even when we plant, I was thinking if I plant a rose, I, 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 I want, want to show everyone and to look, it's, it's my own, something, something like that. that. 
but it's, it's really, really not, not mine. <laughs> Very good. And she does a lot of contemplation. She sends me the email. And the best part is, if you even 5% you are a seeker, you listen and learn, and then you contemplate and reflect, and she has an opportunity. She translates one session of, uh, in the Ukraine. There I volunteer. She attends another session, another group session of Ukrainian people, and then she already attends three more sessions, so all five sessions in a week. But at the same time, it is not that she is contemplating. It's not only attending the five sessions is important, but she's constantly contemplating. That is why I see that she, perhaps, you know, I'm not asking your age, but she seems to be the youngest. And uh, that is the power of contemplation and reflect. Now, I will not compare who is the youngest, Anastasia or Sam. I just leave on both of you. So, how are you, Ashok? Ordinary. <laughs> or Terry, oh, oh, or Terry, okay. Or you. <laughs> <laughs> also, sir, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. And uh, it was uh, really peaceful and calm. And uh, I understand, understand that, that uh, uh, pure consciousness is one only. And, and the individual consciousness, consciousness is, uh, you can say, reflected consciousness. Because the real self is one. Yeah. Yeah. Consciousness, consciousness is one. one. Yeah. So individual, individual there, is there is nothing individual, individual as such. And uh, we can say that, that is reflected only. only. Yeah, that is reflected only. You're right. So, so there, there is contemplation and reflection is going, going on in, in between the lines. Like, like, like there's a theory are, are um, um, observing uh, more minutely and uh, progressing with this. Thank you so much. much. As such, the wave is not an individual water. Yeah. It, it's the water only. It's, it's the water, water only. But we see ourselves as different from others. Who says yeah. this? It is the mind. Whether you say mind or delusion or ego, etc., etc., you rightly reflected on it. Yeah. Beautiful. That is all. Thank you very much for to everyone. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday.